Hi everyone, thanks for clicking on the video. This video is just going to go over the accounts payable tracker that's available at accountingexcel.com and I'll leave a link to the description for the template if you want to download it. It's also just going to go over the kind of how to keep track of your accounts payable using Microsoft Excel. So let's get started here with the template. So it's got four different tabs. It's got an AP aging tab. It's got a monthly summary so that you can see the amounts that you've invoiced each month and your year to date, what you've invoiced, as well as the amounts that have been paid and the year to date that's been paid. Uh, just, just a good tab to have for analysis. And then it's got an AP detail tab where we're going to put in all of your uh, accounts payable invoices and also show when we've paid those invoices. And then it's going to have a, men, a vendor master list that has a list of all of your vendors. And this is going to be good because it's going to have all of the contact information for each of your vendors, the terms of payments for them, whether or not you have a W-9, their EINs, what type of entity they are, and whether or not you need to send them a 1099, and also what you've paid them year to date so that when it comes time for 1099s, you'll have the amount that you need for to prepare your 1099s. So the way this file works is it starts with the AP Aging Summary. And everything is driven on the date on the AP aging summary. So if we want to see what our uh, balances are as of 9-30-2021, we're going to enter that date here. And that's going to populate the remaining tabs of the correct dates. So it's going to show our detail as of this date. So to get started here, what we need to do is we need to need to, and, and the way that I need to show you is to enter a couple vendors so that we can see how that's going to work. Okay, so I entered a couple different vendors in just so we have some examples. And what I'm going to do is come over here and show you a couple different drop downs that we have. So the terms, we can enter in terms if we'd like. There's a couple different ones to choose from. Um, so we're going to go ahead and select net 30 for this first one. And then whether or not we have their W-9, and the W-9 is something you need to collect from your vendors. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and select yes, and then we're going to put their EIN in. So we have their EIN, and then the type of entity, and this is going to kind of drive whether or not we need to send them a 1099. There's different rules for who you need to send a 1099 to. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and select uh, C-Corp for this. And so since they're C-Corp, we don't need to send them a 1099. So we'll select no on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter the rest of these in so that we have them all populated. Okay, so now that we have it, everything populated, we can go ahead and enter in a couple of invoices. So to enter an invoice, all we need to do is select from the drop down our vendor. So the first one's going to be oop, Azar, and then we're just going to enter in a project name. Okay, so appliance repair, and then we're just going to enter in an invoice number. invoice date and it's going to automatically populate the terms for this vendor and it's going to populate their due date so then we're going to put the invoice amount in okay and then you can see that it populates the invoice amount and it's going to show the amount outstanding and the days that it's outstanding and the status of that invoice as of whatever date we select. So right now it's 31 to 61 days outstanding. And then that's gonna show up on our AP aging. Here's our appliances, 31 to 60 days. We have $5,844 outstanding as of 9.30. Let's say we wanna change this date to 12.31. It's gonna put it in the correct bucket. Over 90 days outstanding. 
So I'm just going to enter in a couple more AP invoices so that we can kind of see how it looks. Okay, so I've entered in a couple more. I'm just going to expand that so we can see. So as you can see, it calculates everything, puts it in the correct bucket as of 1231, 2021. And then coming over to our AP aging, it puts it in the correct bucket. We want to change our aging report to September. It's going to show those amounts in the correct buckets as of September. And another thing it's going to do is it's going to show you on a monthly summary what we have been invoiced for the month and it's also going to show the year-to-date invoice for that year. So the next thing we need to do is apply a couple payments um, just, to, just to clear those out. So say that we want to pay uh, Azar and we're going to pay them on October 15th. So we'll say 10, 15, 21. And the amount paid is 5844. It's going to show that there's nothing outstanding and it's going to remove that from our AP aging. And then we can also select the payment type that we want to select. So say that we want to pay them with a check, we can select check, ACH, wire, and cash. So in this case, I'm just going to put ACH. And that's going to remove Azar from our AP aging. So now there's nothing outstanding for Azar. And then if I go back to the vendor master, it's going to show what we paid year to date for Azar. So whenever it comes time to do our 1099s, anything that has a yes next to it, we're going to send this vendor a 1099 for the amount that we paid them for the year. And that's a general overview of just how you can use Microsoft Excel to keep track of your accounts payable. And like I said, this template is available at the Accounting Excel store, and I will leave a link in the description so that you can download the template and Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.